What the hell is love? Well, it isn't sex. My first time was when I invited a girl I had dated casually in high school to a college party weekend. She didn't love me. I didn't love her. It wasn't good. I was very disappointed. She let me know she wanted to, and then she got drunk deliberately and just sort of lay there when we did it. She fell asleep right after, and then she snored. <laughs> Next morning, to make matters worse, she claimed that she didn't remember a thing. <laughs> Later on, I found out from a friend that she had pulled the same bullshit on him. <laughs> Jumped to the following July, home for the summer from college, working on a house building crew, I met a sexy girl driving a purple Corvair Monza with a white convertible top. She drove like a bandit, her car was hot, and she was hotter, and sometimes she let me drive it. It was our third date, a deserted college campus parking lot outside of town. My dad's barracuda, the seats folded down, her on top, me looking up. Behind her I could see the moon and stars through the glass hatchback. Incredible sex that blew my mind. Then every night, my dad's car or hers, any place we could park and fuck. Most, most often in her Corvair, she'd turn the lights off, leave the motor running. We'd both pull off our pants, she'd slide over to where I sat, her legs either side the bucket seat, straddling me, blouse open for my kisses, lowering herself down on me, thrusting in control, much better than the Barracuda. <laughs> much later, I'd drop her off at her place in the city, or she'd drop me off at my parents' place in the suburbs, crashing in bed by two, up again by six, hammering nails by eight, done by five, home showered, meet again by seven, all summer long, fucking every night till I went back to school. And then weekends, I'd hitch home or she'd drive up to see me. And gradually, lust became intimacy and love. So yeah, sex is in love, but good sex can lead to love. So much time has passed since then, most of it's been here in the Big Apple, and here's what I've learned. This is called Aspects of Love, New York City. Like fire, love burns hot for a time, then leaves just smoke that dissipates and ashes, those soon cold. Like smoke, you cannot clutch it in your hand. It will elude your grasp, for love is unconfined and will not be confined. As water in a desert may be precious, so love may be desired by those unloved who may, their thirst unquenched, lose strength, lose hope, lose all, and die for love. Love is fertile ground, good earth that nourishes and nurtures with roots sunk deep in love. We are well anchored and drawing sustenance from love. We grow, we thrive, we flourish. By choice, you may conserve it, save your love to give to but a few who may in turn give love back to you. Love can bring love. But love that you give freely, if not wisely, like seed that you may scatter, falls on fertile soil and barren ground alike, like a net cast on unknown waters that sometimes comes up filled and sometimes empty. Welcome to the city of New York. She's not an easy mistress and you will not be her master. But this is how we live who choose to love and this is how we love who choose to live outside the narrow circle of family and friends. To live extended out into a wider world of wonder, foreign lands and shores of other oceans, towns and teeming cities where other tongues are spoken. The time is now now, and you are here and you are in the right place at the right time. Live and love abundantly, knowing you may lose yet risking loss. Love will be both fire and smoke to you. Quench your thirst for love as often as you can. Some ground is fertile here and some is barren. Love may flourish, though it often dies. But if you stay or leave, Stay long enough that years from now, you may look back and say, Good and bad, at least I had a life, for I have lived and loved in New York City. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. <laughs>